So yeah, I always, I always had the desire to study philosophy. I just never really knew how. I guess the breeding ground for most of these questions that I had was always there. I was always wondering about things like the existence of God, what the meaning of life was. And so I purchased this book by Kierkegaard when I was like working construction um, in El Paso, Texas. And I took it with me to a job site. I tried, you know, deciphering the book at like 3 a.m. Uh, and I realized I had no idea what the hell was going on. And uh, I realized, you know, I could use some help. So I enrolled in philosophy after having been out of school for like two years. And that's sort of where it started, my intro class. Music and philosophy are similar to me in that they represent two parts of me that I can't just do away with. This idea of, you know, questioning stuff or thinking critically about stuff, I can't dissociate that from myself um, in the same way that I can't dissociate the musical aspect out of my, I can't dissociate that from who I am either. So there are two parts of who I am that I just can't really do away with. There's things that I can't say you know, in speech or things that I can't communicate. I decide it's super cliche, but it's like I, I have to just get it out musically. It's this thing I have inside me that I just can't articulate, and it's like it drives me nuts. So I, I keep com I keep coming back to it just because it's it's. I don't want to say it's therapeutic as much as it is. It's just something that I really need. I can't say that it's always therapeutic or that it's always this really easy process. It's just something I find that I need to keep doing. I, I do think that philosophy is important, um, especially when uh, it boils down to issues about our own life um, and decisions about the lives of other people. Um, I think that's when philosophy can be really, really helpful. Uh, what makes me really happy? I just want to say pizza, but I know that's not right. Uh, huh? Burgers. Burgers? No. Uh, family's good. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. I knew this. I knew that. So um, what I like about teaching uh, well-being or, or discussing that with my students is that it, it forces them to examine their own presuppositions and question them critically and then maybe walk away with a better understanding of what makes a life worth living, what makes for a good life. They don't always have a theory to walk away with, but they at least get a little closer to it. I don't think I've answered that question myself, so I'm still sort of learning um, what makes for the good life. I mean, there's different theories out there. Some theories say it's pleasure. Other theories say it's you know your desires being satisfied. Other theories say, no, it's something else entirely. Studying philosophy allowed me to think, examine my own beliefs critically, whereas before that was really hard for me to do. So had you met, had you met Polo like circa 2009 or 2008, it would be really hard to talk to that Polo because that Polo would be really sort of staunch in his beliefs, um, unshakable, right? Whereas now, I think, I'm able to examine my own beliefs a little bit more critically and say, well, you know, be self-critical and be like, yeah, that's, that doesn't really follow. I don't, think, I don't think you're right about this decision, man. Ooh, uh